you are most welcome here today to be on us with us online. Thank you so much for connecting with us in our today's Sunday service. We invite you to connect with our wonderful God and Father through prayer, worship, and the word. We are CCI, City Church International. We are a Kahiu generation, a powerful force of God manifesting his love and will on earth. We are expanding this year, 2020, together with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. We thank you that we are in your presence by your grace. Father, we pray that as we have come before you, Lord, we are going to be blessed. Holy Spirit, we invite you to lead us in this service and show us and teach us the mystery of the word of God. We prepare our hearts to receive, and we know that surely, because you are faithful, we are going to be blessed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. We honor you, and we appreciate you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Now let us worship our wonderful Father. i 
please listen and take note of the following announcements. Prayer request. Please, we would like to hear from you. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, please send your prayer request to the email address below. The Love Encounter broadcast with Pastor Wilberforce is, is, is live on our YouTube channel every weekday from Monday to Friday at 20 hours. Our daily devotion, please send a message to either options that are shown on the screen to start receiving CCI daily messages by Pastor Wilberforce. Our Monday breakthrough prayer and Thursday Bible study, please join us online every Monday and every Thursday at 18 hours. Please, we are on Facebook and YouTube. We encourage you to like and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive our weekly programs. It's now time to give our tithe and our offerings. And uh, if you have a seed, please. Yes, you can give your offering by sending it through Swish or bank transfer with the information on the screen. Kindly, we request that you indicate CCI as you give. And let us worship the Lord our God with our tithe.
Good afternoon, dear friends. Thank you so much for being with us online here today. We are going to go into the sermons right now, and the topic for this sermon is be prepared and ready for this time and for the coming times. Be prepared and ready for this time and the times to come. Let us first pray together. Dearest Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us. Thank you that you are our dearest helper. Thank you for leading us and guiding us into the whole truth. Thank you for revealing the truth to us. And we would like you to really give us the understanding today as we go into your word. Thank you for your word, O oh God, your powerful word. Thank you that your word is alive. Thank you that your word speaks to us personally. Thank you that we will be able to go deeper into your word today and that we will also be able to apply apply these words in our lives. Thank you for this time of preparation. Thank you for preparing us, each and every one of us, in this time and the times to come. We give you all the praise, all the glory for your work. We praise you, we honor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. I thank God for reminding me about the importance of not despising the small beginning. Therefore, so knowing that it will grow and bear good fruit. It is possible for us to influence, impact the world around us despite of what is happening. In the school where I'm working, I see students work despite of what has been said about them. Some students, they have heard, you have a lot of capacity, but you're just lazy. You're just playing around. And of course, it affects them. And I'm so happy to see when I'm assisting them, when I'm teaching these students in school, that they are growing. They grow in knowledge, they grow in understanding, and they grow in wisdom. It is a hard work, but it's all worth it when you see and know that they are developing. And we need to give this next generation hope for the future. We need to speak hope for them, hope to them. We need to say, as Pastor Godfrey taught this Thursday, that you are important. You are important. So all of you who are listening, watching today, all of you youth, you need to know that each and every one of you are important. Amen. God's plan for you is to give you a future 
and a hope. God's plan for you is to give you a future and a hope. For you to be strong on the inside, no matter what is going on in the world. Hope concerning where to spend eternity, eternal life with God. Dear friends, young and old, let us seize the opportunity we have in this time to be prepared and ready for times to come. There is certainly an opportunity for the church, for CCI, including you and I, to allow God to work in our lives. There is an opportunity for us to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. At the same time, there is a chance for us to continue and even finish the race that is set before us. We don't know when, but through the preparation, we will serve God and finish the race well. I say it again. Through the preparation, we will serve God and finish the race well. Amen. Let us see what the Word of God is saying about this. We read from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. Firstly, Apostle Paul is saying, be ready to preach the word when the opportunity occurs, seasonable and unseasonable, when it is appropriate and when it's inappropriate. Secondly, Apostle Paul is teaching and training his spiritual child, Timothy, telling him to fulfill his ministry, the work of of an evangelist. Ministry here means to fulfill his service to God, and the same goes for us to fulfill our service to God. This is applicable to any God-given purpose, assignment in life. If you are to serve God as a nurse, as a chef, as a lawyer, as a teacher, as an apostle, etc. Thirdly, Apostle Paul is saying about himself, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race, also meaning course. Apostle Paul had a course to finish, and so do we, 
you and I. Apostle Paul is emphasizing in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. The New Living Translation says, So I run with purpose in every step. The Amplified Version says, Therefore I do not run without a definite goal. And the Message Bible says, I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. This is straight to the point, dear friends. I say it once again. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it and then missing out myself. Stay alert, stay focused, run with purpose, run with certainty, run with a definite goal. Stay alert, stay focused, run with purpose, run with certainty, run with a definite goal. The scripture we just read says, Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an un imperishable crown. Crown means the eternal blessedness which will be given as a prize to the genuine servants of God and Christ. The crown which is the reward of the righteousness. The righteousness of God. We have been made the righteousness of God. We have been made acceptable to God, made right in His sight, all because of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, because of the righteousness, there is also a good fruit produced in our lives and proceeding from our lives, the fruit of righteousness. We can see this in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. And this I pray, that, you lo that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may prove that Things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And in the book of Isaiah, 
32:17 we read the work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever the effect of righteousness this is what we in CCI is talking about concerning expansion. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us into actions of love. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go back to the first scripture for a moment. 2 Timothy 4, 1-8. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Charge means entrust someone with a task or a duty or responsibility. So, dear friends, we are all entrusted by God, entrusted by God. And God has entrusted us with a divine purpose and assignment. So, therefore, be watchful in all things. The word here is saying, be you watchful in all things. Watchful means to watch and observe someone closely. Be alert and vigilant. In all things, meaning everything always. Vigilant, meaning keeping careful watch for possible danger or difficulties. We need to resist the devil and he shall flee from us. We need to foremost stay alert, be watchful and pray. This is what Jesus told his disciples in the olive grove called Gethsemane. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 45 to 46, we read, When he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray, lest you enter into temptation. Why did Jesus tell his disciples to pray and watch? He knew that they otherwise would enter into temptation, become scared, forsake him, and flee. Become scared is caused by the devil and is resulted and result in forsaking and fleeing from Jesus 
And we know that the tempter is the devil. Further on, Apostle Paul is saying, endure afflictions, meaning withstand hardship and trouble. Apostle Paul is once again saying, fulfill your ministry in the midst of afflictions, sufferings, hardships, and troubles, or despite of any hindrances. How can we do this? How can we do this? How can we fulfill our ministry, our purpose and assignment as a church and members of the body of Christ? It is through the grace of God who gives us strength to continue the good fight till the end. Stand fast in the grace of God in the midst of your troubles. Stand fast in God's grace in the midst of your problems. Let's read from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 to 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. God's grace is sufficient for us, is sufficient for you and I. His strength, His strength is made perfect in weakness. Paul states, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. May we be able to say the same, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Maybe you experience hardship right now. No matter when we experience hardship, we need to depend on the grace of God. And when we do depend on the grace of God, His strength and power, we will be able to finish the race no matter what comes our way. Then we will be prepared and ready. Dear friends, thank you so much for being with us on this journey. Tomorrow in the Monday Breakthrough Prayer, we shall continue to look into this last scripture concerning infirmities. So then we have something to look forward to. And in this preparation, we thank God that for everything that is taking place in City Church Stockholm now and in the future. We are excited to see the expansion of God in this place where we are being prepared and ready for His plan, His purpose, and His will. We thank you all who has been giving in to this renovation. Thank you so, so much for continuously sowing into the renovation, giving your resources and your time. Thank you so much for being here yesterday for the clearing out of the main hall, 
We are now prepared for the builders to come in and let us pray for them as they do a work in here. And at the same time, we should also respect that this now is a construction place for a couple of months. So let us pray together. We thank you, dearest Holy Spirit. You are the one preparing us. You are the one making us ready for what is going to come. Thank you that you are in control. You know everything about us. You know everything what will take place in the future. Thank you for preparing us individually and as a church. Thank you for preparing this place. And we are looking forward to see what is going to take place in this very place. And now we're thanking you also for these workers that is coming in, the builders. We bless them and we bless the works of their hands. And we thank you that we will be able to meet here again in the future, in this place. And this place will be a fresh place place, a wonderful place where people will come. They will be hungry for you, oh God. And we will receive these people. We'll open arms because we are prepared and we are ready to put action and embrace them with love and honor. We thank you, dearest Heavenly Father, for everything, everything you're doing in our lives. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, thank you so much for being with us today. And we believe and we are fully convinced that uh, we have been all blessed because of this service today. And um, please let us meet again during uh, the week in our Monday prayer and Thursday Bible studies and uh, our Sunday service next Sunday. Uh, let us now speak a blessing over our lives. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom and God bless you all. May the peace of the Lord be with you and keep you throughout the week until we meet again online. God bless you.